And I personally also think that the students get a more confident, confident about their own culture and how to discuss cultural issues because this is something that uh, they will do a lot in the future and usually they're not really prepared for this in university. And uh, when we look at our roles in this process, it's basically it's very time, uh, time intensive and um, it is a different type of class in the end. It's not a lecture-based class, it's more like a discussion-based or an interactive class. Or you have to like dealing with the media, which is a bit of a challenge. What usually happens is I prepare myself and then I look into the classroom and students say, oh no, no, this is yesterday. Today we have a new program for much better technology and I have to kind of adjust more to the students. So that would be a classic way to go. <laughs> um, the idea is that in the future uh, we want to do more projects in that field, we want to evaluate them better and maybe make them more publicly available and develop more research in intercultural cross-cultural teaching. Um, the idea uh, is also that this is only the start of what we're doing and um, in the future students will need a lot more guidance in these cultural, cultural issues. Uh, uh, Sophia is a very special university. I think Sophia has a very high number of bicultural students and uh, this is going to be the case in many other business schools as well. And uh, to guide these students intensively to the learning process is probably going to be our future challenge. Um, and the relaxers with the methods come with experience. So if you find it once or twice, then it's easier. At the beginning, it's quite challenging as well. So, and now I want to show you one film uh, that our students have done. Uh, this film was actually uh, the best film chosen last year. And uh, these students, the first one is from the Philippines, and I can have the motto and Mark for the party, like uh, a Filipino parent. So I thought this was the best, uh, the very nice topic that basically Part of the students who did the film have a Filipino background, and the film is about gift giving in Japan, and they explain how complicated it can be to give a present in a foreign culture. Thank you very much. In Japan, gift giving is a value which is practiced throughout the year and is embedded in the Japanese culture and traditions. It is a traditional practice which is utilized in order to show appreciation, respect to others, or to prove the relationship. Some gifts are given seasonally, such as Otsugen, Oseibo, and Otoshidama, while others are given during the milestone of their lives. Gift giving in Japan is a traditional custom usually executed in a formal manner. In the Japanese business culture, there's an expectation a gift will be offered in the first meeting, and gifts will continue to be part of your business dealings. So be prepared to have a gift beautifully wrapped. This is to express you are looking forward to a long-lasting relationship. The importance of this act is emphasized on the ritual of gift-giving rather than the gift itself. Therefore, the gift may be very modest or, in contrast, extravagant. An expensive gift will not be perceived as a bribe. One custom is to give a gift in return that is half the value of what you receive. If it's too expensive, it might give an awkward situation, even at half the value. But don't be surprised to receive a lavish gift, especially if you're a high-level executive.
saying, Tsumaranai mono desu ka, which literally means, this is nothing much but, to portray appropriate modesty, even if the gift is extravagant. This statement is meant to convey, our relationship is more important than this trivial item. The Japanese will politely refuse a gift once or twice before accepting it to show modesty that they are not worthy to receive a gift. And it will not be open in your presence because it prevents the possibility of embarrassment if it turns out to be a poor choice. When a gift is offered to you, follow the same ceremony. Politely refuse once or twice and then accept it with both hands, saving up to open nature. In addition to gifts being routinely given for various occasions or meetings, there are two gift-giving seasons each year. One is midsummer, Ochugen, and the other at the end of the year, Oseibo, and gifts are usually given to their superiors during these seasons. The season of Ochugen is usually to express Osewa Nenarimasu, which is a very common expression in Japanese, and is used to think someone who have done many various things for the person over a considerable period of time. For this reason, gift giving is practiced to show appreciation and continuance of this relationship. Otugen is given during July 1st to the 13th. Most common gifts given during this time are whiskey, ham, fruits, or canned goods, which can be purchased in special areas of certain department stores, Takashimaya, Isetan, or Mitsukoshi. The gifts are given in a formal manner, usually with a thank you card. Although the gifts can be sent to the receiver's residence, it is more respectful to deliver the gift in person. In a similar manner, Osei year, however, focusing the appreciation for a good year and hopefully the same for the next. There's also the tradition of giving Otoshigama, or pocket money, on New Year's Day which dates back to the old times. In the old days, the Japanese counted their age based on every first day of the year, Oshogatsu. So every New Year's Day, they had a tradition of offering omochi, or sticky rice, and praying to the Otoshigami, the god of age, for prosperity and good health. Then, they would share and eat the sticky rice among themselves. However, today, the tradition of giving sticky rice has changed to giving money gifts. Adults usually give otoshigama to children in their family or children of close friends. Some also give to children of their superiors. In some areas of Japan, it is also traditional for adults to give otoshigama to their parents. with the child's name on it is handed directly to the parents. Here are other occasions in which gift-giving customs are present. If you're invited to a wedding, you must bring 
Bushugi, which is a monetary gift in a sealed envelope. These gifts are usually used to cover the cost of a wedding party. People with high status may be expected to give more. The amount of money in the envelope should be odd numbers, since even numbers can be divided into two, and is unlucky for the couple. Also, the amount should not start with a four, since four in Japanese sounds like the word death. Similarly, it should not start with a nine, since it sounds like the word suffering. Meanwhile, if you are invited to a funeral, you should bring kuhonen, which is the same type of gift you give at the